town, situated on the banks of a tributary of the Yumvoti River, in the picturesque rolling hills of the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands, South Africa. This place is often called the Jewel of KwaZulu-Natal due to its stunning natural beauty and delightful charm. Hello, and welcome back to our channel. If you haven't done this already, please subscribe and press the bell icon. That way you'll find out every time we bring you a new and exciting travel adventure video. In December 1847, the Government Commission set out to divide the country into magisterial districts. By 1850, Thomas Oakes had surveyed a town on the farm of L.J. Nell, bringing life and structure to the land. On December 31, 1853, the residents of the district excitedly assembled to decide on a name for the town. After much deliberation, they all came to an agreement and unanimously settled on Pretorius to honor the esteemed Andres Pretorius. Despite this, the colonial government refused the request, recalling Pretorius's history of resistance against the British. The surveyor had already given the temporary name Greytown to the town plans, which was quickly embraced. Therefore, Greytown was established in 1854 and was given its name in honor of Sir George Grey, the governor of the Cape Colony during that period. The Byrne immigration scheme primarily involved granting land to British settlers of Irish descent to establish a settlement in the region. The town was originally established for agriculture and the first residents concentrated on activities such as cattle ranching, cultivating crops and running dairy farms. With the arrival of more settlers, the town steadily grew and infrastructure, including schools, churches and a courthouse, was established to cater to the needs of the community. Built in 1854, the Greytown Lutheran Church, also called St. Paul's Lutheran Church, was erected by German Lutheran settlers who were affiliated with the Hermannsburg Mission Society. These settlers were among a larger influx of German immigrants who arrived in South Africa during the mid-19th century. They were motivated by the desire for religious freedom and better economic prospects. The establishment of the Dutch Reformed Church in 1861 had a profound influence on the religious and historical backdrop of the town. Moreover, a bell was purchased for the purpose of summoning its worshippers. The Dutch and English communities in Greytown engaged in theological conflicts and amidst this period, the church bell was stolen and hidden underground in 1873. It remained buried for over seven decades until 1946, when it was rediscovered during the construction of cottages near the original church location.
1899, the railway's branch line from Pietermaritzburg to New Hanover, measuring 155 kilometers, was opened. Subsequently, it was extended to Greytown in 1900. The total traffic on the line in 1928 amounted to approximately 32,000 tons. Unfortunately, the train services have ceased, and the once bustling railway station is now in a state of disrepair. In response to a bubonic plague outbreak, the Parliament enacted the Native Locations Act in 1904, which enforced the segregation of urban Africans. With the implementation of the Immigration Act in 1906, Asian men over 16 years old were no longer allowed to enter the Cape from abroad, and their entry from other areas of South Africa was greatly limited. In that particular year, Natal employed harsh measures to suppress a minor revolt by the Zulu people against the one-pound poll tax. This involved the execution of 12 convicted Zulu individuals who were responsible for the deaths of two members of a tax-enforcing squad. Additionally, Natal mobilized a force of 10,000 armed white settlers and approximately 6,000 African soldiers to confront Bambatha, the chief of a small Lala tribe in Greytown. This was the last upsurge of Zulu military power. The uprising started due to multiple factors, including the poll tax, economic difficulties resulting from cattle and crop diseases, and primarily the displacement of more than two million acres of fertile farmland representing five-twelfths of the Zulu country to white sugar planters in 1904. The mosque in Greytown was constructed in 1946 as a replacement for the original Sri Vishnu Mandir Temple, which dates back to 1898. One of the notable aspects of this temple is its dome, which is adorned with a stunning lotus flower symbolizing spiritual life. The St. James Anglican Church, constructed in 1911, is a sandstone building that incorporated materials salvaged from the original church built in 1867. Included in the salvaged materials are the foundation stone, entrance and stained glass windows. A memorial stone now signifies the place where it was once located. The Greytown Dutch Reformed Church, originally established as an extension of the Peter Maritzburg Church, the Greytown congregation made the decision to become independent on September 12, 1859. The building was demolished by a tornado in 1879, and a new church was constructed on the same location in 1929. This church still exists today in its original form.
On 23rd of June 1897, the cornerstone of the town hall was laid. However, due to the drain on resources caused by the Anglo-Boer War, only a section of the building was initially erected. It took until 1903 for the entire building to be completed. The historical significance of Greytown in South African politics cannot be underestimated. In 1912, the African National Congress, ANC, originated in Greytown as the South African Native National Congress. St. Matthew's Anglican Church in the town hosted the founding conference. In Greytown, a fusion of Zulu, European and Indian influences creates a culturally rich atmosphere. Renowned for its historical structures, the town features notable landmarks like the Greytown Town Hall, established in 1899, and the Greytown War Memorial, honoring the fallen heroes of diverse conflicts. Throughout the years, Greytown has transformed into a prosperous hub for businesses, catering to the agricultural community nearby. Agriculture is the foundation of the town's economy, with crops like sugarcane, maize and timber playing a crucial role. The town has a variety of small industries that play a role in supporting the agricultural sector. In recent years, Greytown has experienced progress and modernization, including enhancements in infrastructure and services. The town remains a crucial center in the Umvoti region and continues to have a significant impact on the agricultural sector of KwaZulu-Natal. Travelers exploring the Midlands should head to Greytown for a unique blend of tranquility, cultural significance and modern conveniences, all within a town that exudes old world charm. If you happen to have a moment, you can take a detour and visit the ancient Bushman paintings located on one of the rocky hillsides. Additionally, you will come across the pile of stones left by a Zulu tribe as a symbol of good fortune housing an impressive array of historical memorabilia and exhibits, the Greytown Museum is renowned as one of the finest museums in the country. Visitors can explore everything from a Victorian children's room to steam trains and a ship's cannon. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and entertaining. Please like, subscribe to and share our videos. Your support means the world to us and it allows us to continue creating valuable content for you.